Okay, hello and welcome to Transcending Addiction Video 3. This is a playlist on Transcending Addiction. And there's another two videos uh, that come before this, so please watch those. I don't have the name of this video quite figured out yet. That said, it is going to be something like Feeling What You Feel. Uh, understanding what uh, is really going on within the onion. If you've seen the first two videos, you would understand that reference. Getting in touch with what's going on right when you have that craving. Starting to get to the root of the craving. Starting to feel what's going on in your body, in your energy system. When you start to feel that need to um, either, you know, to participate in whatever your addiction is. You know, and the addiction might be not just drugs or alcohol, it could be uh, overeating, it could be watching TV, it could be procrastination, it could be um, anger or depression. And these are teachings that I've uh, attained from uh, spiritual teachers and my own spiritual practice. So all of this is, is really energy work. And uh, please take it as such. If you need uh, medical help, please, of course, consult the... Um, relevant professional and so one of the first things that I'd like to do is to just quickly uh, recap the last few videos before I do that I'd like to remind you of the potential future and it's important that you hold on to this vision the potential future is a you that looks back on this experience with addiction on this very addiction that you're working on. Maybe it's more than one. It's a, a future you that says, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because without that addiction, I never would have looked within. I would have never looked inside myself. I would have never learned all of these things. And as a result of going within, that this, this practice, this process, that this addiction helped me do that I wouldn't have done otherwise as a result of going within I'm now I, I now I'm, I'm so much more self-aware I understand so much more about life and relationships and I have so many more tools to to live a, a life of, of purpose and soul fulfillment fulfillment at the level of my soul than to have joy and peace and and, and harmonious relationships and I could have never learned any of this, all, all of that I could have never learned had I not been given this addiction obstacle to work through. And as a result of working through that obstacle, I, I gained so much. That is the potential future for you. That is what I hope for you. And, and if you follow these teachings, that can happen for you. So... Let me take a quick look at my notes. All right, so in the first video, we talked about transcendence being possible. That's a state where you reach where whatever the addictive behavior is, you no longer feel a, a desire for it. It's just you, you, don't, you don't want it anymore. So someone else can be engaged in it, and for you, it's like there's no attachment, no aversion even. There's no desire and there's no, what's the word? Repulsion. The next thing that we talked about is um, judging. If you judge yourself or if you judge your addiction, then that's just going to make it harder for you to learn and understand what's really behind it. Because people tend to run away from that which they judge or they tend to suppress it. If your addiction is like a box of soul lessons, a box of lessons and understandings and self-awareness, it contains all of that good stuff in a way. If you judge the addiction, if you judge the box, then you're going to stay away from it. You're going to push it under your bed. You're going to lock it up in storage. You're not going to open it up and, and, and check out what's in it and examine it. You know, people tend to depend on judgment as if if you judge something, 
if you say it's bad and wrong and you if you punish yourself for doing it that supposedly that would help you stop you know and and family members unknowingly do this to try to get the people they love to stop engaging in the addiction of course it doesn't work it just leads to the person who's addicted feeling more judged more punished more pressurized more more in pain and then what do they do when they're in pain they seek out that which brings them relief that which they're addicted to so you see the letting go of your judgments no longer resonating with others who judge your process that's optimal of course you don't need to go to those people and say hey you're bad and wrong and I hate you for judging me and you're toxic that's not optimal either being compassionate and understanding of those who judge and, and who do not know better is optimal especially because maintaining harmonious relationships in your in your process of transcending addiction keeping peace in those relationships that's gonna help you so the next thing that we talked about in, 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 in the first two videos or at least one of the other key things was how addiction is an opportunity to understand yourself and, and we already touched on that so let's keep moving we touched on then the layers of addiction so addiction has many layers on the on the surface it might feel like on the on the very outer layer of the onion we might feel like oh well you know we we just like to party for example or we just love to eat well that's not a very self-aware but it's a very superficial level of awareness not meaning any judgment with that word superficial we can go deeper and if we were we might find oh you know we like to party or we like to overeat because we feel very bored okay and and then sometimes people will put a full stop a period at the end of that and not go any deeper and, and they'll assume yeah I understand that said they're still addicted so that means really that they haven't understood because once we truly understand once we understand everything there is for us to understand the negative pattern the addiction it goes away we transcend it so as long as it's still there keep asking what else is there for me to learn keep your student hat on at all times never take that hat off you know the spiritual teachers and masters who transcend all addiction <laughs> who are able to just be at peace wherever they are even if they're in traffic or wherever they are they have they are there they have reached mastery because they have mastered the art of being a student and there's they remain students so continue to be a student in your life continue to ask and to understand more and more about your process of addiction about your thoughts and about the emotions and feelings that drive it go deeper and deeper into the onion because beneath that oh I'm bored so if we think that oh we just like to party because it's fun and then we go deeper and say oh I actually I like to party because I'm, I'm bored in my life and I'm looking for excitement and relief from that boredom go deeper why why are you bored because if you if you really meditate or introspect and, and feel that feeling of boredom and look into it and 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 dig you're gonna find that there's way more going on than just boredom boredom is just a label that we put on it beneath that boredom might be feelings of <clears throat> I'm overwhelmed in my life because it feels way too hard to make ends meet or I'm unfulfilled in my life because I I don't have the sort of vulnerable relationships that I truly truly want or I'm, I'm I, I don't feel like I'm doing a good enough job in life and I'm constantly judging myself and the only way to get relief from that is is to party or or use alcohol and, and drugs to change my state of mind and what I feel at least temporarily or to overeat which gives me a lot of distraction from the pain that I feel underneath and my feelings of not being good enough so you see how as you go deeper into the onion 
layer by layer, you're going to find more stuff. And that's good. It's good to celebrate that because that is attained self-awareness. And as you attain more self-awareness, your life will get better and better because you'll become more empowered and conscious and capable of, of navigating your life. And, and over time, that self-awareness will help you transcend your addiction. Once enough self-awareness of the addiction is attained, it will be cleared. So keep going. And uncover all of those feelings beneath the layers. Because the addiction is really just a reaction to those deeper feelings. Now, if you watch the, the, the first two videos, we're going to cover this. We, we're, everything I just described is covered in there. Right? And it's important to, to, re, in, to, to reinforce this in this video so that you can rewire those neural networks, remake those connections in your brain, and integrate it so that it becomes an understanding that you carry with you, not just something you heard and forgot. So revisit these videos, re-listen to them, or re-watch them. So the other last thing that we covered in, in some past videos, in the second video, Transcending Addiction number two, is that whenever we have an addiction, whenever it, it feels, it means that we sort of have a feeling that we need that thing. So if we're in the present moment and, and then we experience a craving, that craving is taking us out of the present moment. What's your craving? What, what is it that you crave? Get in touch with that feeling now. And see how it's pulling you. Why? Why, why can't you, wherever you are, maybe you're waiting at the doctor's office. Maybe you're at home on the couch. Maybe in, you're in bed watching this video Wherever you are, why, why not just be at peace? Why can't you just be at peace? Well, that's not a, a, a challenge or anything. It's a great goal. That said, I'm not expecting you to be able to just be joyful and at peace right now. It can take time to get there. That said, we all do have the capacity to feel joy and peace in the present moment. The French mathematician and philosopher a few hundred years ago, Blaise Pascal, said that the, the problem with mankind is man's inability to sit in a room alone and do nothing. Interesting. Man has so many different thoughts and emotions bombarding man and woman have so many thoughts and emotions bombarding them in that room alone that they drive themselves crazy. <laughs> that it, they, and, and they did a psychological test. A client of mine just shared this with me. Thank you, Jason. They did a, a psychological test and um, a psychology test where they put people in a room alone. They first told them that the, they, they had them push a button that shocked them. And they asked them, well, you know, would you ever want to, to push that button again? And they said no. Then they put them in a room alone with that button, just that button. And lo and behold, eventually people got so bored, bored, that they started to push the button. <laughs> anything, sorry about that, anything to distract them from themselves. Because our thoughts and emotions and feelings are really just ourselves, different parts of ourselves often subconscious. That's why I'm here sort of preaching self-awareness because as we become conscious or aware of these subconscious parts of ourselves, then they're no longer running us subconsciously. They're no longer in there bothering us and, and all of a sudden we've cl we can clear them and then there's quiet and stillness and peace in that empty room. And when there is peace in that empty room, you want for nothing. You desire nothing. You lack nothing. You feel whole. And this is a metaphor for life. Wherever you go, you can feel whole. 
how amazing would that be? Might this be a good long-term goal to set for yourself right now, to commit to? And you'd be surprised what change this would bring in the world if everybody committed to such a goal. I'll give you an example. Do you think politicians would be, could be bribed with fancy cars and bags of money if they had actually learned how to be at peace and whole within themselves? Hmm. Probably not. They probably would not be bribable. They'd probably have, instead of, you know, using money to try to get relief from their pain, right? Feeding their addictions of having, you know, the status, the power, the nicest house, the nicest cars. They may just say, hey, you know, what's way more fulfilling to me because I'm already whole and at peace is to help make this world and this nation more whole to help people who are not yet whole. And I care about that way more than accepting money from these corporations trying to get me to pass legislation that will allow them to further exploit their employees and their customers and the resources of our nation and, and tax dollars. So as you do this work on yourself of transcending addiction, you're actually helping humanity evolve. Not by going out and necessarily like teaching it to people who aren't ready to receive it. That said, by applying it in your own life, by modeling this behavior in yourself, by doing the work, by, like Gandhi said, being the change. Because as every single individual in the great big web of humanity or tree of humanity adopts internal change, as they look within and and upgrade their own systems through self-awareness and meditation and, and educating themselves with conscious, wise information. As they do that, then the, then, then, then the, the group mind, the collective consciousness of humanity, which exists, <laughs> the, the ant colony that is humanity, our tribe, as its members become more evolved, the tribe becomes more evolved. And that happens not by forcing people to change. It happens by us looking within and being that change. Because as we do, our internal light shines brighter, and it is reflected in every decision that we make. And the people around us who have, who all have extremely um, powerful subconscious minds, and, and also energy systems, they pick up on that change in subconscious and subtle ways that the conscious mind cannot. And so it's not so much that they're learning literally from us, it's more like they're learning subtly from us as we embody new understandings. So all that said, Let's move on to a sort of practice. I have given the information so far to help you understand why this practice we're going to do is beneficial. As you now know, when we're sitting in that room alone, our, our cravings tend to come up. Our, well, first, our thoughts and emotions and feelings tend to come up. And if you've ever seen someone who's, who has addictions, and addictive tendencies, you'll notice that they don't sit still very um, well. They tend to budge, to, to, you know, like rock their leg, to reach for their phone, to, to text, 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 to, uh, let's see, to, to want to, to have a, a coffee or a cigarette or uh, constant distractions. They have very um, much difficulty sort of being still and being calm and being at peace. They got to go somewhere. They got to be doing something. Uh, and sometimes it could be like working out and exercise. Even that. They got to be cleaning the house. They got to be doing this or that. And, and it's like very difficult for them to just 
sit and be and, and do nothing. They constantly need distractions. Now, I'm not saying this is bad, and I'm not saying give up all your distractions. Certainly better to, to work out than to go do drugs uh, or to go overeat. Uh, better to read a book than to um, just keep eating, watching TV, for example. Um, better to go do yoga than to um, you know, just watch pornography for hours. So all that, uh, there, there can, there's, you know, none of this is meant as black and white. Better to drink a cup of coffee than, than to go drink, you know, uh, 10 beers. So build yourself a process that works for you. None of it needs to be like perfect or black and white. You're not going to go from one day to the next. You're not going to go from having your sort of tendencies to then all of a sudden just being a, a, at totally at peace within yourself. These are all, none of these are metrics to judge yourself by. And I don't mean any of these with judgments. I personally have worked through these sort of tendencies in my own life. So I, I am not saying this with any degree of um, of looking down or judging or saying that you need to change. That is not the message here. You are not alone. Even people who who judge addicts are usually addicts themselves. You can have a, a very wealthy CEO who considers themselves perfect and is like very well groomed and you'll find that and, and maybe doesn't drink or, or do any drugs and works out, you'll find that that CEO might be very addicted to their status, their comp competitive behaviors, uh, competing in society and having power, um, sort of being perfect, uh, sort of addiction to perfectionism, which a lot of people have. So you see, all of us are in this together. You know, 99%, more than 99% of human beings have addictions. So, at this point, let's move towards the practice. The practice is to feel what you feel right now. And the reason we're going to do that is because the underlying layers of the onion, the deeper layers of the onion that cause us to feel uncomfortable in the present moment, that prevent us from feeling at peace in the empty room. And you could see, you could look at your body as, as the empty room that we're always in, a metaphor for that. If we're not able to feel at peace in our body, how are we going to feel at peace in our home, in our bedroom, at work, in the car, at the gym? We can't. We must first learn to feel at peace in our body. And it is the feelings in the body and in the mind, and they're very related, the body and the mind. The feelings you feel in your body generate thoughts in the mind, and vice versa. If we cannot bring peace into that system, if we cannot f learn to, to relax, and if we cannot get in touch with the lack of peace that we feel, then there's, no, there's really low, a very low chance of us transcending our addiction. Unless we just like sort of like through sheer willpower force ourselves to quit. That's it. If we do that, then the addiction will pop up elsewhere, typically. Like when you squeeze a balloon, right? And then it pops out here and pops out there. <laughs> so feel what you feel right now. Close your eyes. And I'm going to close my eyes. You can either choose to stare at me or you can do the practice with me. So if you close your eyes and start to just relax your breathing and scan your body. Imagine you're in a sort of empty room and all you can 
see, feel, hear, or sense, all you can sense is your own thoughts, emotions, and, and literally the feelings in your body. Maybe those feelings include tension. Maybe they include tingling. And what are your thoughts? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about like time and things you got to do in your schedule? What are you feeling? Do you feel just at peace? Or do you feel a little frustrated or anxious? Or scared? Just feel what you feel. This is completely unique to you. You don't need to mentalize it or intellectualize it or think about it. Just feel what you feel. Notice that you probably don't feel completely at peace. Because if you did, <laughs> then you wouldn't have addiction. Notice how there might be some discomfort in your body that you didn't notice before. And realize that it is this discomfort, this physical, mental, emotional discomfort, these discomforts that you feel when just sitting in a room alone. These are the discomforts that drive us to seek distraction. And what we're really distracting from is these discomforts. this energy in our body that, that feels uncomfortable. <sighs> Take a deep breath as you allow yourself to feel these discomforts. Believe it or not, by feeling them, allowing yourself to just feel them, you can begin to transcend your addictions without any mental process. As you allow yourself to feel them, they will begin to clear up and out of your energy system. They will leave up and out the crown of your head, this energy. It'll go up and out. You don't need to worry about that, though, or think about it. Just feel what you feel and notice that you probably don't feel completely at peace right now. And if you do, great. Because if you're completely at peace, then you're not going to seek out any addiction or any, anything that you're addicted to. So just get in touch with whatever you feel. Try to just distance yourself from your thoughts and your mind. And get in touch with the feelings in the body. You'll notice that these feelings in the body are energy in your energy system and they themselves generate thoughts in the mind thoughts are just these ripple effects the ripple effects of these feelings go to the root go to the feelings and feel them these are the feelings that we've been suppressing and hiding from ourselves Check your joints. Which joints feel tense? Check your finger joints. Check every joint in your body now. Just feel them. Which ones feel tense? And go ahead and, and relax into it. Imagine your body is like a one of those chairs 
that when you sit into it, it wonderfully leans back just naturally. And I want you to just sit into your body, deep into your body, and just lean back into your body. Now, don't physically do this and fall, please. <laughs> Make sure you are safely seated. And have this, this sort of sensation or energy of leaning back into your body. This is what we're doing here is we're getting you into your body. Most people are ungrounded and in their head and in their imagination and not really in touch with the feelings in their body. Even though the feelings in their body drive most of their decisions and behaviors and addiction. So if we want to resolve the addiction, we must go to the root, which is these feelings in our body. And by just facing these feelings, which may be very uncomfortable at first, by just facing these feelings, feeling these feelings, we can become comfortable with them and, and they will clear. Now this will lead to far more peace than any addiction which will inevitably cause you to feel more uncomfortable feelings in your body over time until they're so uncomfortable that then there's no addiction that can help you except for facing what you feel. And that is not an addiction, that is a that is the application of consciousness. And sometimes people don't do that in a lifetime and and they pass away because of their addiction and and then maybe they can do it in a future lifetime. Our hope for you is that you're able to do it in this lifetime. Notice how when you're addicted, when you really want to smoke a cigarette or or uh, or eat or drink, notice that right before right when you want that there's a feeling in your body and instead of you trying to use the addiction to distract from this feeling instead check maybe sometimes try to feel what you feel face this feeling and sit with it and it will it will start to clear it might clear immediately it might take some time it, it's going to be different for everybody and it's going to be different for each feeling you have. And that's okay. As you engage in this process, which is a form of meditation, it's a meditation technique, you might find different oh, things clear and emotions come up and just feel them. Don't believe in any of them. None of them are true. These feelings within ourselves, these thoughts within ourselves, they're not real. They're our imagination. They're stuck energy. Just allow yourself to feel it with the sort of confidence and faith that everything is okay, that you're in a room and in the room everything is cool. You're going to be all right. It's okay to sit in your body and feel these feelings. So you can open your eyes now, or whenever you're ready. I mean, don't let me stop you from participating in this practice. Just pause the video and keep going. And then when you're, when you're ready, you can go ahead and, and, and start the video again. I hope that I've been able to communicate to you the how this sort of works. You don't need to understand all of it. You don't need to make up sto to create stories or, or explanations about why you feel what you feel or what you're feeling. It, all that's required is that you feel the energy, that you feel the feeling, and you gain the capacity to sit with it. And guess what? As you practice this, 
over time, you're going to become so comfortable with it that you won't even notice it anymore. And so that feeling will no longer be driving you to smoke a cigarette because you won't have discomfort from it. And there might be several feelings. Face each of them. Or, or allow yourself to just feel whatever you feel. Maybe you have feelings in, in, your, in your legs and in your shoulders. Feel them all at the same time. And whatever's comfortable for you, whatever you can, can manage. A little hint here. There is an energy center called the root chakra. <laughs> it's right by, it's right about where the tailbone is. You ever heard of someone being like super anal or anal retentive? <laughs> it's because the root chakra has a bunch of energy blockages. And right there in that tailbone area, there are, I mean, literally those muscles around there, when people are anal, the muscles around their anus are tense and tight. And this is true for like 99% of people. So go there, feel that muscle. I mean, just get in touch with is is that area relaxed? Is the pelvic floor relaxed? Or are you clenched and tight there? Having that clenched and tight will affect your entire energy system. And you may not be able to get in touch with it yet. Just focus your awareness there and over time you'll get in touch with these feelings. If you don't feel anything in your body, keep going. It'll come. Just like when kids learn to raise their eyebrow like this at first they look in the mirror and they're like trying to get it and they can't get it but as they continue to intend it all of a sudden they gain the capacity to to influence these muscles and they start to get feeling in these muscles so keep at it and over time you can start to relax each energy center you or each part of your body going from your 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 root chakra and your tailbone to your second chakra which is around the pelvis region to your belly to your chest to your throat to your third eye and your crown and also your body parts your arms your palms your legs allowing yourself to feel what you feel there because it is these feelings that have been subconscious in the past that lead to us feeling uncomfortable in the empty room of our bodies. Uncomfortable being in our bodies. And so we seek these distractions, the cigarettes, the alcohol, even the coffee and the, the, the uh, overeating and the, and the, the over-exercising and, and the, the bulimia and anorexia. These addictions are the ways in which we cope with the uncomfortable feelings in our body. And ultimately, life has a way of, of making it so that none of our addictions work in the long term. And eventually, we all must face our, the way we feel, whether it's in this lifetime or next. So I, I hope that this video has been very helpful for you. Uh, I hope that you can see how potentially helpful this information is and can be for you if you apply it. Revisit this information. Rewatch these videos. Study it. Introspect on it. Think about it later today. Practice it. You can practice this at any time, feeling what you feel. And it's nice. It's liberating to, to, to focus on feeling what we feel, to feel what we feel instead of like being in our heads all the time. It's actually nice. So, um, if you'd like help, one-on-one uh, -on -one help, consider a spiritual counseling session uh, and, and consider actually doing that regularly in your life, whether it's with us or with someone else, because uh, it is sort of a really important part of anyone's evolutionary process, in my opinion and in my experience. And... Um, Uh, if you haven't, watch the first two videos on Transcending Addiction. And uh, I guess that's it. Oh, if you like this video and it helped you, please like it. 
please comment. Leave me a comment if you if you want to, if you have something to share. Uh, and uh, oh, subscribe if you if you want to subscribe to this playlist. I think there's a way to subscribe just to this playlist. Uh, that said, you can subscribe to our channel and find out about new meditations. You can also go to our website, which is linked to in the description below this video. Uh, the website is DexterAndAlessandrina.com and subscribe to our email newsletter if you'd like to get more information like this. Um, yeah. I wish you a, uh, a day and life where you love and accept yourself and you don't judge yourself no matter what habits or decisions you fall back into because it, that path of, of love and acceptance is the path that will lead to your uh, liberation and, and to, to your most deepest happiness and love and um, to eventually the, uh, our species um, becoming more enlightened and evolved in us resolving the, uh, the, the environmental destruction, pollution, greed, corruption, and war and killing and, and, and the other issues that our species is, is facing today. And so have a wonderful day and um, God bless.